Okay, let's go ahead and get started. Article 500, Hazardous Locations. 500.7 Protection Techniques The requirements for combustible gas detection systems were extensively revised. So 500.7K Combustible Gas Detection Systems Combustible gas detection systems are only allowed in industrial settings with qualified persons and limited public access. We're talking about combustible gas. So obviously this would be a class 1 location and most class 1 locations are already in an area that has limited public access and is already in an industrial facility. Now, combustible gas detection systems are hardly a new protection technique. They've been around for a very long time. But unfortunately, in previous versions of the code, you'd go to 500.7K and there just wasn't much there. It, it told you that we can use them, but it didn't really tell us what the settings are what it's supposed to do when it, when it senses combustible gas. What kind of sensors do you use? So in the 2020 edition, they made it from about three paragraphs to almost a complete page of code text. So there were a lot of revisions here in 500.7K. Now, unfortunately, we don't have the time to go through each and every little change in 500.7K. We have a lot of areas to cover in chapter five, but let me just kind of give you an overview here. 500.7 K1 gives us the general requirements. The system has to be listed for a class one, division one location and the specific gas or vapor. This was at a facility that tests fuel injector systems. So they have, as you can imagine, combustible gas detection systems all over the place. They're listed for class one, division one, group D as in dog, because that's where gasoline falls, but it's not just the group rating. It has to be identified specifically for gasoline. Moving on, the system must not use portable equipment or temporary wiring. We can see here in the photograph that this is all permanent wiring methods. Looks like uh, some strapping probably is in order, but you get the idea. Subsection C, it must use only point type sensors, although additional open type sensors are allowed, but you have to have point type sensors, and that's what we have down there. One of the things that it talks about in the 2020 code that was never mentioned before is the settings for the system. In some applications, it has to go into alarm if it, if it gets within 40% of the lower flammable limit of the specific gas or vapor. We also added three new type, actually four new types of protection techniques, three of which have to do with optical radiation. And this is something that the code has never really addressed before. So when I look at 500.7L, this is for optical radiation, but it's inherently safe optical radiation. And then you might notice in quotation marks, it says OPIS. Now, that's something that you might be used to seeing if you're familiar with the zone classification method that we use in the NEC in Article 505 and that we use throughout Europe and other parts of the world. So OPIS is kind of the, the uh, IEC standard or the, uh, the, uh, the outside of America way we would name this. Here in the States, we call it inherently safe optical radiation. Here's what we're talking about. For the most part, it's laser beams. It's any optical radiation, but in reality, we're, we're pretty much talking about laser beams. And again, that's something we've never really covered in the NEC as a source of ignition. 